we're going to have a, a, a reenactment of a, a typical battle reenactment of uh, uh, skirmishes and battles that may have occurred in, in, the, in during the Civil War, particularly in 1863 to 1865. Uh, there were several uh, events that happened along the Red River here uh, during that period of time. There was not anything in particular that happened over here, but the, this is just going to be typical of what was happening during that period. You never really understand yourself as an American until you get to the crossroads of the American Civil War. Uh, Shelby Foote, a noted historian, said that before the war we referred to the United States in the plural, the United States are, and after the war we became a united country and we then changed the phraseology to the United States is, and at the end of the day that's really what it was all about. This is Fort Randolph on this side uh, of Highway 165. On the other side of Highway 165 is Fort Bulow. They're only 600 yards apart. Both were, were constructed in 1864, the winter of 1864 and the early uh, spring of 1865 they got finished. The, 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 the thing that's significant about that is that uh, the invasion of the area was in the spring of 1864. So they were built after that as, a, as kind of as a precaution for it happening again and they were fully expected it to be another invasion in 1865. Didn't happen, okay? Um, but the two forts were constructed, they were, they were manned by about 800 uh, soldiers and with a total of maybe 11 to 13 guns. They, they uh, covered a good section of the river here. There were rapids in the river here during that time, which made it hard to navigate the river anyway. Plus, if, uh, if with the Union Navy coming back up, they would have encountered the rapids and these big guns in this bend in the river. In the day of the Civil War, we did not have walkie-talkies or devices, uh, radios. So signals and communications were used in various and sundry ways, with flags, with drummers, with bugles, etc. So that is a very strategic part of troop maneuvers in the use of drums and drum rolls, uh, commencing the battle, retreat, things of that nature. It was used as an actual component of command in the battles, and you'll see some of that today. Now, some of these reenactors get so involved in the battle that they, they are there. You know, they, they think they're back, back to 1863, 1864 because they're so much involved in the whole thing. I'm doing picket duty today. This is what they you would see a soldier would live in, a type of uh, weather condition. Uh, you were lucky if you were sleeping under one of these. You would usually probably be sleeping under a bed, bed row, and you would have your your coffee pot and your fire down here at the bottom and stuff. He is cooking mush, is uh, uh, cornbread and stuff that they would make together to make a patty with and stuff. A lot of times they would have corn and bacon and stuff, and they make the greasings off of it. Uh, they would half cook the bacon, and you see where they would take the bacon and stuff and partly raw and they would stick it in their haversacks and stuff. I'm portraying a woman that would have traveled with the soldiers. A lot of wives, daughters, sisters, mothers would have gone with the soldiers and they were cooks for the camp, seamstress, laundress, anything to support. It would have kept them as a family unit and it also would have helped the family earn money. The main event of course is the reenactment at one o'clock. Uh, uh, that's going to be the, uh, the, 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 the real show. Okay. The, the camps are open uh, uh, throughout the day if people want to walk through the camps and, and, and visit with the reenactors and try to immerse themselves back in, into that period of time. That's really significant too. It's because you could get an idea of what life was like during that period. What I'm wearing is, a, is an officer's uniform. Uh, shoulder boards are, would be normal for the, the Union Army. Uh, a, a sword and a pistol is the main weapons that a, uh, an officer would carry. Now the uh, in, enlisted men would have uh, uh, their haversacks, uh, cartridge box, cap box, uh, uh, musket. Usually an enlisted man would carry anywhere from about 55 to 60 pounds of equipment on him. And uh, it was it was nothing for him to, to march 20 miles a day and then go into a pitch battle. So uh, they, they were very, very stout people. They had a uh, variation of muskets, uh, uh, Springfields, Enfields, 58 calibers, 69 calibers. Uh, the pistols were, were mainly by, held by cavalry or, or uh, officers, uh, field officers. Um, sabers were carried by, by cavalrymen. We are sharing history with our community. We have brought in school children from around this area and they get to see in action things that they would read about in their textbooks.
they were able to see a blacksmith in action. You know, that's just about a lost art in this area. And they were able to listen to a lady talk about female roles in the Civil War. And they were able to see what went on in the garden during the Civil War. And they were also able to see and listen to someone talk about plants and herbs. The blacksmith was one of the key craftsmen on the plantation during the plantation operation because he did everything that was needed to be made out of metal. He would sharpen the plow, the plow points. Uh, he would make hinges for the doors. He would make latches for the doors. Uh, he would make utensils to be used in the kitchen uh, and hooks to hang things on and also some pretties that he would put in the house uh, for the owner's wife uh, so that he kept in good uh, graces with her. This is a wonderful opportunity for school children and adults to see firsthand and also hands-on how things were back in the time during the Civil War. I know from my daughter that uh, they're studying the Civil War and um, the, the general history and stuff around the Civil War and how it affected the, uh, the local area and uh, in the Kent House and uh, Fort Bulow, Fort Randolph are uh, doing some reenactments and uh, they've got a lot of characters and stuff that are here that are, uh, that are in character demonstrating the way of life at, uh, during that time period and, uh, uh, and generally showing these kids the, the, the history, how, how things were, uh, were done, uh, the, the life, the living, the conditions, everything. And, uh, and it's, I think it's been fairly beneficial for them to, to see it. It's just like a really cool place that you can come and talk about with some of your family members. I am presently on this unit at school and our kids are learning about the Civil War. We just started the first shots that were fired at Fort Sumner and we're approaching even more of um, the Civil War itself especially the reason why advantages and disadvantages. What brought us out here was a little boy in third grade had a school project last month and he did it on the Civil War. And when we saw the brochure, we had to come out and see what it put the two together. The most significant thing that, uh, that most people take away from here is, uh, is the, the scariness of the boom boom because we're going to have four, uh, eight cannons going off pretty much simultaneously. That's really uh, gives you an idea how of uh, how uh, dramatic and how scary the whole thing was to the ones that were actually participating in the, in, in the, in the battles back then. Very loud, wonderful, uh, just boom, 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 and uh, the smoke, the smell of gunpowder, everything, just, it's, it's great. Cannons are neat. They're loud and lots of smoke, lots of noise. The little boy really liked them, so it was great. The cannons, I think they were great. Shooting sparks, smoke, all that stuff. The cannons really uh, caught us off guard. We, we had heard they would be loud, but uh, to experience it was really, uh, really unique. It was really loud, and it was kind of cool to see history back at today. I love history a lot, so I love learning new things. And if you pay attention to it, you can gather a lot of information. The reenactment was great. Uh, there was smoke flames, fire, loud noises, bodies everywhere. It was great. And um, we're going to do it again. Next one we uh, find out, we'll go to another one. The realism of it was very, was very interesting. And um, it was, you know, it got you in the moment to really see kind of what it might have been like, just a little taste of what it might have been like. It was very, very neat. I would tell my friends whenever to come over here that it's a really awesome experience. It does, like I said, teach you a lot and it's very historical. Well, this is a very important to, to Alexandria. You know, Fort Randolph and Fort Beulah were built after the Red River campaign to make sure that the Union never came back up the Red River. And this is a very important thing. We need to keep history alive. We're losing it every day, and more people just need to be aware of what's in their own backyard. I think it's always important to learn from history, um, where, where the, the good and the bad of, of history, if you learn from it, at least you, you'll, you'll learn not to repeat it in the future. It gives a chance for us to realize how much our forefathers fought for this country and stuff that started during the uh, War of 1812 and the Revolution. The old cliche, you don't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. And this is a good look back at where you've been. Yeah.